Hey, what's up guys? I haven't made a martial arts video in a while. Um, I found it hard to find time to train, to find motivation, like stoke, you know what I mean? Like excitement to train for it. Um, most of the things I've been excited about in my training lately have been the climbing thing, so it's just hard to find the time and energy to include the martial arts in addition to the climbing, you know what I mean? Um, I need to just, you know, put in some minutes here and there, which I have done. You know, I've done like, you know, a little shadow boxing here and there, um, some forms, you know what I mean? Taekwondo forms here and there, some uh, old school drills. Like I think I filmed maybe a week ago of me doing like the, uh, dynamic tension, hard style, front stance, push pull punches. I know it's a mouthful, but I'm not really sure <laughs> what it's called. Um, I'm sure if I asked my old instructor, there's like a, you know, small Korean word for it or something, but uh, I'm not sure what to call it in English. He wasn't sure what to call it in English, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I just call it. I describe it as it is, you know what I mean? But uh, there's so many things like that that, uh, that I've learned and that I still practice to this day, where I don't even know what they're called, but <laughs> I've done them like thousands of times, you know? Funny. Anyway, um, yeah, I've, I've had trouble getting back into it, guys. I'll be honest, like I've only practiced hardcore twice in the past like a month and the rest has been uh yeah just little micro workouts here and there mostly shadow boxing and stuff um i'll try to do better but at the same time i'm not gonna push it like <laughs> here's the thing about taekwondo man um this is of course my opinion uh my experience but people get confused <clears throat> when they see my kicks because I think they think they're looking at, like, Muay Thai or something, which most people know because Muay Thai is a big part of mixed martial arts. Um, and I remember when I got mixed martial arts before they were, you know, people who were mixed martial arts fighters. Um, mixed martial arts was basically, as was taught to me, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Muay Thai. <clears throat> and I would have to train those separately. Um, because I had, like, two different instructors. One didn't know dick about, you know, Muay Thai. <laughs> so we got together with the other guy, and they, like, started kind of the gym together. Um, that was in Athens, Georgia. Let me kind of spray my posture, you guys. I'm slouching like a fool. <laughs> um, yeah, so I learned this separately, and honestly, I... I barely learned how to combine them. Like, if anything, it was kind of, uh, here's, here's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, here's Muay Thai. All right, go fight MMA or whatever. Good luck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go spar this guy, I guess. You know, figure it out. <laughs> um, they did have, I mean, I mean ugh, sorry, I'm stumbling over my words. They did have mixed martial arts classes later, but, you know, I'm just saying back in the day when this gym started, uh, talking about, like, 2008, you know what I mean? Nobody was really, like, a mixed martial artist. Um, they just knew maybe a few things that were really good at one thing, dabbled in the rest, and just fought the sport MMA. But now I feel like mixed martial arts is more of an art form. It's more of a martial art. Um, which is pretty cool, and I ended up watching a UFC fight kind of recently at a uh, friend of mine's place, a uh, new friend who was really into UFC, and I was like, yeah, fuck, I'll come over and, you know, <laughs> chill with you and watch UFC, that sounds cool to me, um, and it was neat, man, it was fun to, because I haven't watched that sport, really. Other than highlights and stuff I've seen online, I haven't watched an event of UFC in, like, probably over 10 years. 
Like it may have been like 2012, possibly, when I, the last time I watched um, a full fight in UFC. Um, so it was cool seeing how a lot of things were exactly the same. But the one thing that I saw, which was so cool to see, that I didn't see much of back, you know, 10 years ago or 20 years ago or whatever, was the kicking. The kicking is looking good, dude. The kicking is looking real nice. <laughs> Man, these guys, uh, what's his name? Patty Pimbleton was throwing mad kicks. And what's cool about these kicks is... Um, <laughs> they're kicking kind of like me, like kind of like how I was taught. I can see the blend now of like Muay Thai with Taekwondo and stuff like that, you know? You got the spinning kicks, the side kicks, the back kicks, the jumping shit, like all of that. And they're even, I can tell they've been taught like Taekwondo or possibly um, a karate or something. You know, karate and taekwondo kind of have a lot in common. In fact, there's karate in taekwondo. You know, not many taekwondo instructors want to tell you that, but it's kind of like taekwondo is a mixed a mixed martial art, basically. You know, it's like an amalgamation of a lot of things, a lot of traditional martial arts that come out of Korea, as well as uh, like karate and stuff like that, <clears throat> which had a lot of influence on its creation. Uh, which was in like the 70s, guys. Taekwondo has only been around for, you know, 50-ish years or something. Not many people know that. Anyway, these tangents. <laughs> but I know that's why a lot of y'all are here. You enjoy my, my stupid ramblings. Uh, what the fuck was I just talking about? I don't even freaking remember. I've lost it. But, um, yeah, it was cool seeing the kicks of these guys, you know? These mixed martial artists had, like, mastery over kicks. A lot of them did, that I saw in that event. I watched pretty much all the fights, even the preliminaries. And a lot of those guys, I'm telling you, mastery of kicks. Very cool to see. Now, one thing that people don't understand when they see me kick um, which is odd, because when I see people like, for example, Patty Pendleton kick, he kicks in a Taekwondo fashion, by that I mean, he kind of puts everything into it. Okay, in Muay Thai, you're taught to, like, guard yourself, <laughs> you know what I mean, a particular way. <clears throat> that way, this arm is blocking your face, this shoulder... Okay, and this arm can block, like, your ribs and stuff, and this side of your face. Um, you're taught a very specific way to throw a roundhouse kick, for instance. But in Taekwondo, um, which is a similar mindset to boxing, you do every, every movement you make is to maximize the power of your kicks. Okay, because every kick needs to be powerful enough to knock somebody out because if it's not you might get immediately countered in a taekwondo fight by like a spinning kick or something you know um so you really want to at least do enough damage to stun your opponent hopefully just straight up knock them out otherwise you're probably gonna get knocked out because You've thrown defense out the window. <laughs> You're putting everything. That's why you see me like kind of swinging my arms wildly. You're putting everything into your kicks. And you're saying, fuck defense. It's a high risk, high reward kind of style. <clears throat> so it's like, yeah, it's better to knock this guy out. Otherwise, it's probably going to knock me out. <laughs> uh, which is such a fucking manly thing if you think about it, aka a dumb fucking thing. <laughs> but uh yeah, so people were commenting on my kicking videos and they were like, oh you should put your hands this way as if I was doing Muay Thai. Um which I do know some Muay Thai, but I'm hitting a bag. First of all, why am I hitting a bag? Typically it's because I want to work on either my resistance, 
you know, build like my resistance to pain and impact with my like lower shin and stuff, that kind of area. Um, and then two, I want to gain power. Okay. I, I've lost at least 50% of my power because I'm out of practice. <clears throat> so I'm hitting the bag so I can build that power, so I can build that resistance to my own power <clears throat> while well, someone was striking. Sorry guys, I'm still a little sick. <clears throat> um, so yeah, why, why should I give a fuck about defense if I'm trying to put everything I can into a kick? <laughs> and also, I'm, I'm never going to fight again, guys. I'm 32 years old. You know what I mean? I didn't even really fight that much when I was younger. To be honest, I just sparred a lot, you know? And in Taekwondo, I'll be, I'll be very honest, I didn't spar as much as I wanted to. I didn't, uh, pff, shit, man, I feel like only my first year or two, maybe first three years is when I did, like, the most sparring. After that, <clears throat> pretty much after I was, like, a, uh, so like, maybe a second-degree black belt or something, I barely did, like, any sparring. <clears throat> Part of that was because there was really nobody to spar. Um, I did end up going to, like, other gyms and stuff to, like, spar people, even kind of got back into kickboxing very briefly for, I think, maybe a three- or four-month period uh, because I was, like, visiting gyms. I, like, liked this one dude who was starting a kickboxing gym. Um, but, yeah, man, I, other than that, I barely spar. I think I sparred maybe, like, twice in the past five years even <laughs> and they went okay i mean i think i pulled something last time i sparred in like my uh my like mid back i like threw a freaking you know i was trying to go too fast or something like trying to jab boom and like immediately with that right hand i think i just wasn't used to moving that fast anymore and like pulled something in my fucking lower in like mid back mid lower back or something Ugh, getting old but, um, all this to say, guys, what was the whole point of this video? I don't even know anymore. The point is, <clears throat> y'all's entertainment. <laughs> but no, uh, it was cool to see all that kind of stuff in UFC, though. And, um, man, I, I'd really like to practice more and get to, get back to the level I was at when I was maybe, I don't know, 23 or something, 24, probably my prime, but, uh, I don't know, I feel like there's just a doubt in me um, that, I, that I'll never do that again. It is kind of realistic because Taekwondo is a sport that's all about speed, right? All about agility. And I feel like that's like the first thing to leave you, you know, as you get older, as you uh, age as an athlete is like your agility, you know? <clears throat> I'm trying to train agility a little more often and doing like plyometrics and stuff like this um it's just hard guys it's just hard when you're fucking old and shit <laughs> obviously i'm still young 32 is young but again for like a speed and agility kind of sport also very high impact sports like jesus i've already put my body through so much you know what i mean <laughs> climbing however it's very low impact, yeah, maybe the falls you can see are like high impact, but as long as you fall, okay, you're fine, you know? And I feel like I do so much <clears throat> decompression work, handstands, hanging upside down and shit, that, you know, my spine's, my spine's gonna be fine. <clears throat> my, my back has never been hurt from like falling, I have like all kinds of low back issues and stuff like that. Hell, I freaking pull my back when sneezing you know what I mean? But <laughs> I can fall from like 16 feet onto a crash bed and be totally okay. But uh, yeah, man, climbing is super low impact. Um, I took to it at first because <sighs> Here, here's how crazy I am, guys. I mean, a lot of people watch this video and already probably think I'm crazy just because the way I look, the way I talk. But um Back in the day, like, I was really into some outlandish aesthetic shit. I still am, kind of. Uh, 
and we'll talk about that in a minute, but um, <laughs> I was very into like studying and like researching stuff about martial arts and uh, what struck me the most and I thought was the most cool an interesting martial art would be these kung fu guys out of like China or whatever. They would have like very specific skills. They would just grind on for an entire lifetime. You know, <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's such a stupid fucking thing, but it's also so epic. <laughs> and the artistry is uh just it's like simple yet like astounding. You know, what I mean? it's like look at a fucking uh, a Mark Rothko like color painting. Like it looks like it's kind of dumb. Like how simple some of his paintings are, but at the same time, you keep looking at it and like something's pulling, something's pulling at you. <laughs> you know, you're you're drawn to this despite its uh, simplicity. And part of the reason of that, it's the same as Kung Fu shit I'm talking about is like if you work on the simple things to such a fucking degree you'll be able to master that beyond like anybody else like think about somebody <clears throat> who is like a bench press specialist okay what's the fucking guy's name who has a bench press record right now is it julius maddox right pretty sure it's julius maddox you know he he's pretty much about to bench like 800 pounds you know what i mean that's so insane but that's his that's kind of like his simple kung fu that he just worked on you know all of his life is like bench press bench press bench press you know what i mean and that's why he's so much ahead of everybody else obviously he has, he has like natural talents too like his size and stuff but <clears throat> you know who the fuck else is going to bench press 800 pounds? Only the people that specialize in it continue doing that for a long ass time. You know what I mean? These guys in Kung Fu that will literally just punch a fucking tree the same fucking way <laughs> all of their life. Hell, they'll even do it with only their left hand. Like if there's a guy out there who's right handed and his Kung Fu... It's basically like, yeah, I do everything with my right hand, and then this is my punching hand. <laughs> and he just does that. He'll punch a tree. Or I think this guy punches, like, rocks. <laughs> crazy shit. He'll just punch a fucking rock every damn day, multiple times per day, for, like, 50 years. And now his left hand pretty much looks like a fucking rock. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, his knuckles... Like, these are, like, regular, you know what I mean, sissy boy knuckles that I have. <laughs> His shit is, like, psh, these bulbous masses of calluses just surround and, like, protrude to, like, here. The guy's pretty much wearing, like, <laughs> a box, like, of MMA glove. But it's, like, all, you know, skin and, like, calcification and shit. It's, like, hard, harder than stone. It literally breaks rocks, you know what I mean? That kind of shit fascinated me. Just the, just the simple genius of like doing that forever. And believe me, I don't think anybody, you know, I don't, fuck, I don't think fucking uh, the heavyweight champion of the world and, you know, MMA or kickboxing or boxing or anything is going to want to get hit by this fucking mallet. <laughs> this guy built over like five decades. I mean, it just looks... He might as well be, like, holding a rock in his hand and just, like, smashing somebody in the face with it. Just how crazy he, uh, he changed himself, you know what I mean? So crazy he, I don't know, man. So crazy his imagination was, you know? It's so, like, he just decided one day, I bet if I do this forever, <laughs> I'll be the best... I'll have the craziest, best uh, left-hand punch in the world, basically. Um, like, to have the imagination to conceive of that, and then over, like, five, or not, not five years, 50 years, I was going to say five decades of uh, dedication and discipline and pain and 
stagnation. Think about how boring that is to do that forever, to have that kind of discipline and foresight is uh, pretty insane, man. It's an insane human achievement to literally turn your hand into a weapon. <laughs> you know what I mean? Over a period of that long by doing such a simple thing. Damn, I'm rambling. I'm a rambling, gambling man. A little Bob Seger, anybody? <laughs> oh, man. I was drawn to this stuff, too. And I, I did a little bit of this kind of thing for a while. Um, like, you see me doing still to this day the planks on the back of my hands. I used to hit the bag like this. You know, that comes from, uh, <laughs> like, the drunken style or whatever. You know, like, they're holding the holding the freaking glass of whatever the fuck it is, wine or whatever. Jackie Chan, drunken master kind of shit. <clears throat> the idea behind that is, again, just insanity. That anybody would think to do this and then do it. It's like, well, these bones are very small and, like, naturally fragile. Over time, you can beat them into, like, good shape. But, you know what's already hard? It's, like, your freaking arm bones. Okay? What if you could just punch with your arm bones? What you do is you stretch your wrist a lot over time, load it up, and get to where you can literally hit somebody with the end of your freaking bones in your arms instead of your knuckles, which is a way, way denser, you know what I mean, harder thing to be hit with. It's like being hit with a freaking, uh, I don't know, just imagine like a freaking metal pipe or something, somebody just like jabbing, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, a seven inch, whatever my wrists are, eight inch circumference metal pipe into you, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's fucking crazy. People do it. I did it for a little bit, but I kind of, I kind of gave up on it. I figured, what the fuck? Well, what? <laughs> I've got better things to do with my time. Uh, but I did all kinds of stuff. I kind of did. I would condition this side of the arm bones. I would just slam my arms, you know, into the heavy bag and the trees and shit. You know what I mean? Um, pretty hard. You know what I mean? Elbow and stuff. You know, guys in like Muay Thai do this. This is like normal shit in Muay Thai. Just elbowing so much that this side of your arm bones. What the hell is this one called? The thumb side? I don't know. I can't, can't think of it right now, but this gets so conditioned. You know what I mean? The point where you're like now you can use it to like block kicks and freaking shin bone won't break your arm, which is well conditioned elbows. It's well conditioned also from like other stuff too, like holding the pads for people and whatnot. Obviously block, start pressing, blocking kicks, so that makes it better too. Anyway, point is guys, this kind of idea, this simple, brutal idea of like just hitting shit <laughs> until you become hard, as hard or harder as the object you're hitting. Such a crazy, a crazy fucking concept, but it's the same concept in climbing, kind of, okay? Think about all the conditioning I had to do to get my fingertips strong enough, tough enough, calluses all over my hands, you know what I mean? To be able to hang from something that's less than one centimeter, you know? To be able to freaking do a dynamic move on, like, sandstone or something harsh and just... Bah, slapping the top of a rock hard. You know what I mean? That's pretty much boom, all of your weight for me, like a hundred sixty ish pounds, bah, smacking that onto a rock. You know what I mean? Very similar to what the Kung Fu guys would do. You know, striking rocks, striking rocks. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of the same concept. Okay. And that's what drew me to rock climbing to begin with. And I had this idea that I could get <laughs> my fingers, my fingertips strong enough to a point where I could make these uh, weird techniques work. Like the spear hand, for instance. Like, what if I got, <laughs> this is my sick mind, 
I was like, what if I got my fingertips so powerful that my spear hand would be able to go anywhere? You know what I mean? The only way this works for like regular people is to target like softer areas, you know what I mean? Like the throat or something, or like the armpit or the groin, you know what I mean? Um, otherwise, if this slams anything other than those tires, probably just break your fingers, you know what I mean? It's not gonna, you're not gonna like hit something like the skull with this, you know what I mean? The fingers are gonna definitely, definitely break or get strained at least, you know? I was like, man, what if I just conditioned my fingertips to where I could just hit anybody like anywhere with my fingertips and I just got so powerful like somebody tries to kick me it'd be some like anime shit I just like BAM spear hand their <laughs> freaking shit in half <laughs> very very silly but I was like shit it'd be interesting to try and see if it's even possible you know what I mean <laughs> so that's how I got from martial arts into climbing and then once I got into the climbing I realized you know what? <clears throat> I think I like this more than martial arts. You know what I mean? I like them both. But I think I like climbing more, man. That's why I'm putting so much time into it. I don't know, man. There's something about it that becomes very meditative for me. Very, uh, I don't know, man. It's like a fight, you know? It's like all your senses just dial in, you know? Everything you got goes in this one simple task. In a fight, it's like, you know, it's happening. I gotta, like, beat this guy, ah, you know? Uh, so the person, sometimes you get to fight things that aren't people, guys. Sometimes you get to fight a rock. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you gotta fight yourself in the fear of falling, the fear of failing, the fear of, oh, is this like next hold good enough? You know what I mean? That's like another kind of fight. So I appreciate that I'm becoming mentally stronger <clears throat> and very, uh, I don't know, just like mentally stimulated from this kind of uh, stuff. You know, there's not a whole lot that can stimulate the sick mind. Kind of a, uh, I don't know, I'm one of those guys that likes to do kind of like extreme stuff. Now, bouldering, I don't think it's that extreme. But you are going against like <laughs> what's natural. You know, you're finding your own instincts of like, oh shit, I might fall on this thing, you know. You're 20 feet up <clears throat> or something. It's like, oof. Ain't no ropes. <laughs> I gotta keep going. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's an interesting thing. Um, I just, it all seems so familiar and similar to martial arts to me. Uh, but I think even better, man. I think nature was probably the. Uh, the thing I ended up needing the most, okay, for my mental health, you know what I mean? You go to a martial arts studio, you're indoors all the time in this kind of sterile, boring environment. Um, that's kind of how you practice martial arts, unfortunately. If you go to other places like Thailand or something, there's open air gyms and people are kicking trees and shit, you know? <laughs> but, uh, it's kind of how it is in the U.S. and most places. Um, with climbing, you go outdoors, man. You can really climb anything. Climb indoors, outdoors. Climb a fucking building. Climb a tree. Climb a rock. <laughs> you know? You're out there. You're in your freaking natural habitat. You know? I'm out in the woods. Nobody else is around. I'm not hearing nothing but my own breathing and perhaps a cuss word here and there if I fall. <laughs> I'm just out there solving a little problem. Okay, I'm making a little line of my own. <clears throat> Being creative. Seeing like 
possible solutions, trying them out, putting it all together like a freaking puzzle, piece by piece, and then accomplishing whatever little climb <laughs> that nobody else cares about, but I care about because I did it, you know, finish this little project. It's like an art project, you know, as is martial arts. You, know, you can call <laughs> creating a bulbous, calcified left fist uh, it's just like a really bizarre art project at the end of the day. <laughs> I, don't think that, I don't think that guy's even like fighting anybody. He just did that for like the hell of it, I guess, for fun. I assume it had to have been fun for him. We had to make, make you know, somehow figure out how to make it fun for him because otherwise, how the fuck. Did he just do that all the time for 50 years without even having to fight anybody? You know, there was no necessity. He just decided to fucking do it like a weirdo. But that's what art is, man. You know, it comes from <laughs> unique, the unique minds of humanity, you know? What one guy does might seem like the most idiotic, ridiculous thing in the world to one person, but to... You know, three others, it's like, holy shit, mind-blowing. You know, it freaking turns something on in this noggin. <laughs> it's thought-provoking. It's, you know, it's something else, guys. It's art. It's subjective. That's what I find really fucking interesting about uh, climbing. That's what I always found interesting about martial arts. <clears throat> was the artistry. And that, um... A lot of techniques, especially in modern times, were not uh, really built out of necessity. I mean, in a way, they were because it was a necessity to get better at your sport, but it's like, it's still a sport <laughs> at the end of the day, you know what I mean? You're not going to go out into the freaking uh, war zones and do jujitsu on somebody, you know? Somebody's just going to drop a drone grenade on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we don't even really need this shit anymore but for some reason we just as a species decided to continue martial arts you know to just turn it into like an art form into an entertainment form into a pastime into a lifestyle you know it's not really used for war anymore people are using drones dude go check out <laughs> the footage from Ukraine you know what I mean? Half of that shit is just like a drone with a grenade, some guy controlling it from God knows how far away. And just boop, two guys dead and they haven't they had no idea they were gonna die. You know what I mean? They, they, no way they could see that coming. That's war now. <clears throat> it's not this. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, man. I'm into the artistry, and uh, for now, <clears throat> I feel like my art is climbing more than anything. Um, I'm not good at it. <laughs> I'm not really good at it, but uh, in my imagination, I see a time where in the distant, not too distant future, I will be really good. <clears throat> if I just continue what I'm doing, and like that guy who's punching that rock, <laughs> I'll be the dude hanging from my fingertips <laughs> on little less than a centimeter inches for the rest of my freaking life. And, uh, you know, right now, <laughs> I don't have the freaking, <laughs> the iron fist, you know, I don't have the iron fingers, but uh, who knows, man, maybe in 50 years, <laughs> if I'm still alive, <laughs> I'll just have gnarly fucking claws, you know what I mean? I won't even have, <laughs> like, my last digit, my last phalanx will just look like a fucking stone, <laughs> like a diamond, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how I want to be, guys. Anyway. <laughs> Mantis style. You'll have to go. <laughs> You'll have a good one.
This is definitely the most <clears throat> out there video I've made in a while. Um, hope you all enjoyed the rambling. Take it easy. Keep crushing. Peace.